All right, what's up guys? So today, my guy Wes from the Charlotte market is coming down. We're gonna hang out with his team, shoot a podcast, show him around Winston a little bit. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Act like you don't hear it. Come on. What up, man? You all right? I see your feet today. I said, I see your feet today. Francisco. Que pasó? What up, peoples? Oh, good. All right. I know you're not far behind when I see Bentley. Please <laughs> block <laughs> What's up, man? How you been, bro? Good, good, good to see you. Bro. What's you going on, man? I'm Gage. Nice to meet you, nice Gage. Meet you. My brother. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, man. Hey, what's up? What's up, brother? I'm doing uniform with what it was. Yeah. All black. Black on black, all the time. What's up, brother? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, Rich. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. My pleasure. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, man. Pleasure. Absolutely. No problem, man. I see the feet. I see the feet. I see the feet. What's up, fellas? <laughs> Going to the game tonight, right? Yeah. I'm excited. Home over there. Are you player side or are you? Uh... You know, I don't know. Let me look. You and you know you you been there way more than I have. Yeah. Nas gonna be in teal and purple head to toe. You going with more? Him? He got his own season seats. Did he? Yeah. How many? How many did he get? Two. Who's he going with? His niece. I gave him tickets to last week's, next week's Monday game. I was, I, I'm take him back because I ain't going nowhere no more. So exposure is, is the most important. Y'all seen the office? <laughs> no, you want to give yeah. it? Yeah. Let's check, check it out. So, um, you know, the whole Venture Atlas model was was built in in about so so in two so I've had I've got three offices downtown. I'm going to get rid of two here soon uh, in January, and so in 2000 early 2019. Um, I woke up one morning and was like, I need to do something bigger. Yeah. And it was like, you know, a couple million dollars a year wholesaling is cool, but I want to do something bigger. So I was like, how can I you leverage my brand, leverage the people, what I'm already helping and have them work out of here. So in 2019, we, uh, this was empty. So it was concrete floors, no glass, no, no, no drywall, no nothing. We spent about 200 grand fixing this spot up. I wouldn't do it again because I don't own it. Right. So it's like it's, it's crazy. So I'm in a five year lease. You know, it's not expensive. You would think in Charlotte, this would probably be twenty thousand dollars a month, seven, eight, seven, eight grand with parking. Right. And so I have the whole other side that I can expand into. And that was my original plan. So that's why I told him, don't put me on the floor with nobody else. I'm going to expand into the other side. So the idea behind Open Adventure Atlas is I'm going to have a community filled space where if you want to be a wholesaler. You come here. I got the infrastructure. You run, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to show you how to run the play and I'm going I'm to be I'm going to be the GM office. I'm going to be the back end. You go out there and run the plays. And then, uh, so that's 2019. Uh, January, we moved in. Construction was done December. After Christmas, the whole team started moving in. We had furniture coming in from China and all places. We took a week. Everybody was putting together chairs. We was all doing stuff. And then COVID hit. We went, we went to We Live 19, February. Came back from We Live 19. Boom. COVID, COVID, sorry, COVID. Yeah, 20. We Live 20. February came back. COVID hit. And so we had, we had systems set up where people could scan in. They had like, you can schedule this meeting rooms and stuff like that and then COVID hit. And so I was like, oh shit. we just moved. And luckily I had bought what I call my core staff. So everybody that has an office that has a glass office is the core, right? It's either gonna be transaction coordinators, I have my own attorney, um, I have everybody here. So we close deals all, all here. So we don't do anything outside of the house. So, you know, my brother runs the day to day, he's the CEO, then you got the, the, the sales manager, he oversees the team. And so we started building a team. First round, we have 49 people in here. And so we're doing trainings, training, boom, COVID hit like two weeks in. Sent everybody home. Luckily, I had just bought new laptops. Everybody got new MacBooks, right? So I was like, okay guys, I guess we're gonna be working from home. So I gave everybody two months at home working full pay. We didn't really, we wasn't really set up to work at home. So there was a learning curve, right? So in that short amount of time, everybody thought the world was gonna end. Right. 
So wholesaling almost kind of stopped. So I am with a new office, just spent 200 grand. I got a you know forty thousand dollar marketing budget. Uh, you know I'm spending fifty thousand dollars a month in payroll, and I'm like holy shit, yeah. right? And so like I'm back in as well. I was like, yo, I, I'm gonna dedicate a half a million dollars to this coronavirus, and if it does, I gotta start making some moves. I gotta figure out how to switch this up. And so luckily we we you know we regrouped. We was like, look, let's just figure out how to work from home. Put some new systems in our CRM. And we started doing some home stuff, and then slowly we started coming back into the office. Did you flip the virtual home selling at all, or did, did y'all keep going on appointments and stuff? So virtual, virtual is something we kind of did anyways. Yeah. I kind of hate that word because it's just wholesale. I think marketers right. created the virtual right. side of it, yeah. but yeah, so you know we, I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So from your context, yeah. So we started closing all over the phone, okay. and then so, but the problem was buyers were like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So there was that pa- that moment where you're like, do I even go acquire? Right. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. then the, the, they rolled into me, okay. We got these deals, we got eight deals, I'm just gonna buy them. And so I started buying, buying deals. And I started saying, all right, come, I'm just gonna have rental properties. Started flipping, so we are doing five, six flips at a time. It was like, we just gotta wait this corona out. Yeah. And so I was buying, 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 and so like at 29, in 2020, I probably, I probably ran up to like 22 rental properties in that short amount of time because Whoa. buyers were like kind of scared. So it switched my mind for him to just say, okay, I got the money from the brand side. Let's just, let's just keep, it's just different let's, let's just do it. Let's just hold on to it. This, this whole side right here was going to be all dispositions, right? So these are going to be your eight to 10 people that were on the disposition side and they were going to run the country when it comes to dispositions, but everybody had to go out and procure their own buyers, right? And so you had to go get your own buyers. And if you got your own buyers, it became your buyer. And every time that buyer bought, you got a VIG, you got a VIG, you know what I mean? And so if you look along here and kind of show you how, like how it was set up. And so you had, you had like the lead disposition guy, then you just, we had a break room, we never had no user. Tammy is a paralegal, she works with our attorney in, in office. So we have an attorney that closes all our deals right here. And then the cool thing is we started closing other wholesalers deals, right? And so we started getting our own, we started generating buyers lists from across the entire state because we would, I would say, hey, close, close my office, close my office. We got lower fees, we know, how to, we know how to get it done. And so we started generating a buyers list that was bigger and bigger. And then Francis, Francis and I have been working together since kind of like a year after I started. Big and Francis. Francis, is, Francis is a realtor. So the thing that is good about Francis is he, one, has been, was doing investment real estate, working with investors for probably what, 15, 16 years prior to me meeting him. And so how I met him is, I had a property in the neighborhood he already owned a house and he wanted to get a bigger house in the same neighborhood because he wanted to keep the kids in the same school. Mm -hmm. And so I stick a sign in the yard, he drives by, he calls me, I show it to him and then he was like, cool, I'm also an investor, I work with investors, but I can't find any property. And so I think a couple days later, we jump into a car, we ride around, we pick up a few properties and then from there, we just start developing a relationship. But he was also working with investors, but also managing the rehabs. He's Hispanic, he's from Peru. So he gets, he knows how to speak to all the Hispanic contractors. Mm -hmm. So there was this big advantage of, okay, cool. He knows, been in the community for a long time. He knows electrician, painter, this, this, and this. And so since he was managing rehabs, it was easy for us to start rolling into doing rehabs. And then I got to the point where Francis is going on appointments by himself. And my first $100,000 a month, I was gone in LA with Edson for like two months. And Francis, Francis was closing deals and that was our first, I remember I was on Runyon Cannon working out and I get a call and we closed that deal on, uh, we sold it to that Mexican guy that owns the gas station. And that was the first month we hit 100,000. Wow. I was gone for two, I was, I was two, two months. Two to three months I was gone, right Francis? I was gone because Edson was going through some shit, trying to deal with retiring. Francis has been here since this is day one. This is my office. And then you obviously got the conference room. The next office is Everett. Everett is runs the, the over the sales team. It was, and it's still hard. Yeah. It's it's still hard because I'm. So, uh, you got to find for me. I have to find the same obsessive personality, yeah. right? And so that's that's my brother Orlando. He runs the day to day operations. So I don't write any checks. I don't do. I don't. I'm complete. I have to ask for checks. So there, that's what I'm saying. So I completely remove myself from the the situation of being on the day to day operation, right? And so I'm only involved in very small amounts of, I may or may not be here for the, the nine o'clock meeting. You know what I mean? I may not be in town, whatever it is. And so then we, we had this phone booth where it was a bright idea. I was like, hey, we just put a phone booth in here. It's like a soundproof phone booth. So if you're on the sales floor and you got an important call and you want to get in somewhere quiet, you jump in here. It's got laptop space. It's got plugs. And so, yeah, if you step into it, it's soundproof. 
Can I just have that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a cool soundproof. It's got a fan in it. It's got lights in it. And so this was the original original uh, floor sales floor where everybody would get their own individual desk. They can come and go as they please. And then when COVID hit, it was like it was like oh my god, what the hell's gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. So the reality is, even though, even if you provide office space, if they're in office twenty four seven, they ain't getting no deals. Oh, that was like a cheap spin, but I get it. I was trying to get you know that free lunch. Yeah, that was intentional. Cool. You owe everybody a Best Buy gift card for hundred bucks. No, you owe. You got to pay everybody. A, the stats would stay on this wall, and everything would would be there. You could walk in the office. You know where you at. There's no, and there's everybody no, else knows where you're and everybody says no. So that creates that competition. You guys are athletes, so you you know the stat sheets is public. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro? We know if you drop two points, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know if you got no rebounds. You know what I mean? We, like we, we like we know, right? Forever. Right? And so forever. it's it's forever out there. The hardest part about any business is the people, right? We're, we're we're continuously hiring and firing people all the time, and so people just don't get it. You know, it's like a free lunch ticket for some people. And so, you know, if you don't grind, you don't shine. That's just what it is, right? And so if you don't, if you don't want to be at the top, then don't waste anybody's time. Like there's some good jobs out there to get. Go get those. But don't come in here and pretend like you want to win. You know what I mean? Because you're going to mess up the fabric of everybody else being here. And so that's the hardest part of scaling this business. This business is pretty simple. It may get tough at times, but systematically it's simple business. You reach out to people who have the potential of selling. You negotiate. You get to know them. You negotiate. You get the house on the contract and you sell it to somebody else. That doesn't get any more damn simple than it is. Now, it's all the in-between. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Are you the right person? And that's the culture message. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest, right? So you start bringing personalities together, right? And so I know we've, we've got rid of people just because the personalities don't match, right? We've got rid of great salespeople. They don't work, they don't fit. Yeah. right? You mess up, you, you, you know, cancer in the locker room. Yeah. It's, it's, it's true in the sense of like, just because you think you put up 30 points every night, you get to do what you want. Nah, nah, nah. nah. I, t- I tell everybody KGI is like the, like the path to the yeah. like Patriots, right? Mm-hmm. Like Belichick built the system. Mm-hmm. You plug somebody with talent in, they shine. Correct. You plug somebody with an ego in, disaster. It's gone. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it's a system that's built well. And if you got a little bit of talent, it'll extrapolate that talent out. If you got great talent, it'll show yeah. everybody that talent. But if you if you come in and making a name for yourself... It just don't work. It, it don't. It don't. And you can be a great leader. You can come inside the pack and be a leader. You can lead a team. You know, a lot of these guys sit out here and brag, like, yo, I just made $100,000 by, by, by myself. So, you know, I make 30 grand a day if I want to. That don't mean I'm happy about it. Right. But how can we all make some money? And right. So if you go look at any successful company, there's not just one guy that's all his effort. It's the effort of many. And then as he uplifts everybody, the where's the hot, what tide rises all boats? Yeah. If we all eat. Now, I may be up here because I took the biggest risk in the beginning, but we all comfortable because everybody's dream is not to be worth a hundred million dollars. Your dream may be to be lift comfortably, make a half a million dollars a year, go on five vacations with your family, live in a nice, beautiful house with a nice backyard and buy a car every two years. And that's a great life. Right. Do you do you know that? Do you know the percentage of people that make over one hundred thousand dollars a year in America? How much? Guess. Hundred grand, just a hundred, just a hundred thousand dollars, less than ten thousand dollars a month. Maybe twelve percent, nineteen percent. So everybody on Instagram lying, ain't they? Oh yeah, they lying. Everybody's lying. It look, it look good for the camera. Yeah. Now here's the craziest stat: what percentage of minorities make a hundred thousand dollars? Two point nine percent. Right. And so the idea is, if 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 everybody's saying that, everybody's dream can't be a hundred million. And so, do you know what it takes to be in the top? 1%? That's 400,000 a year. Right? 400. Yeah. So look at the gap between ni- the 19% to 1%. Now you're telling me you can't go make $400,000 in a year? If you break that down day by day, that ain't a lot of money. And I'm talking gross. But people's mentality is it's has effed been, up. Yeah, man. It's effed up. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I feel like there's a shift coming. When you hear a jobs report and you see 3.4 million people dropped out of the job market, where the hell do you think they went? They figured out $12 an hour wasn't great. $15 an hour wasn't great. They figured out they needed to do more. And they're like, yo, I could Uber and make the same amount and have my own time. Why am I going to go work for this guy? And so 
I'm a capitalist, but I'm also a fair capitalist, if that makes sense, right? I think the biggest recipient of welfare is billionaires. Like, Yo, what do you mean? If I can work at your job and not pay you a fair wage, and in return, the government supplements that worker for the wages I don't pay them, they're incentivizing your company working. If you can't pay 15, 20, 25 dollars an hour, you do not have a company. Your company's on welfare. It is, you think about it, the welfare is not for the individual, yeah. It's for the in, it's for the big guy that can't pay a fair living wage. And so you don't want to you want to build that culture. You want everybody to eat. Right. And like I said, every, may not everybody may not be worth twenty five dollars an hour. That's great. Don't hire. Them. But you can't you can't complain. You can't go through the drive through and wait 15 minutes and complain and then drive away and say, oh, we're going to pay McDonald's 15 dollars an hour. You just complained about sitting in the drive through. You got to have you got to pay them more. Right. What's I mean, who cares if a burger's a dollar more like. I hate when people talk about about gas prices. Who gives a f right? If it's four dollars a ten, I don't care. That's a broke mentality. So anytime I hear somebody saying something, I'm walking away from them because that don't even. I, I don't couldn't even tell you what the gas prices are now. I filled up last night. It don't matter. I know that whatever it costs, I'm gonna make more money than I put in there driving around. So it don't matter. If you start charging me ten thousand dollars a tank now, we might not have to talk. But until then, it don't matter. And so it's because if you dr if you only use your car for leisure then of course it's gonna be expensive. If I use that to go get money, it don't matter. Listen, I love him, my goal is to be a billionaire. I ain't even gonna say in front. Now people, people say, you know, one thing I do get, this, this is like, this is, you get to see like the real Max, this is just me talking. You know, anytime somebody says they don't wanna be a millionaire, get away from them. Get away from them. It's because they're selfish. Because it's the opposite. You say, yo, if I get a million dollars, what's that leave you? No, no, no. If you get a million dollars, then it means you get to help somebody else. Absolutely. Help that church. Absolutely. You get to do this. You so get that, to do... So that's your... Because I was going to ask, you want to be a millionaire, why? Because I want to help people. Because if I can do this with being only worth, yeah. you know, $15 million, yeah, what can I be doing up here? Yeah. And so because... That, and that's, so that's why you don't... That's why, that's why God doesn't empower everybody to become wealthy. Yeah. You got to take... Some people can't be wealthy. Yeah. You got to take care of them. Yeah. And so... Anytime, anytime somebody say, yeah, I just want to be comfortable. Okay. That's a selfish person. Yeah, man. That's a selfish person because you're only thinking about yourself. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a lot. I mean, and, it, and, it, and it, a lot of this depends on your circle, right? Like a lot of your growth depends on your circle. And so you'll start losing friends. As you climb this ladder of success, you'll start losing friends. Don't worry. It's a great thing. Yeah. You know, Drake said, I'm losing friends, finding peace. That is real. <laughs> It is absolutely real. And you'll start to lose friends. And people, the main thing is people won't even understand what you're talking about. You can't even have the conversation that you're having with your regular people with these folks. And so there is just uh, there's just a group of people that are true workers. And so you just got to be you got to be very conscious of the What's going on, brother? You got to be very conscious of the people you, you hanging around with for sure. Max, this is Blaine. What's going on, Blaine? Hey, Sit. Nice to meet nice you, brother. To meet you, My brother. pleasure. You. Bentley. Motorcycle. Bentley here. Here. Place. Go place. He's in timeout. Even though it's good He tried to be smart. Come on. Place. Bentley. Get over here. Place. Down. It's still ready. Down. He's trying to pounce out of here. Yeah, so let's see. Okay. Let's, you guys are hungry, I would imagine. Yeah. You guys are hungry? I'm always hungry. It's fast, it's fast. <laughs> so y'all know this right here is a, a, the, the Empire State Building. So the guy that designed and built the Empire State Building in New York built it here first oh, to prove the concept out and then took went to New York and built the same building. Really? It's the same exact building, just smaller. It used to be the headquarters for RJR. Now it's a hotel and apartments. Okay. So I think the first six, seven floors is a hotel and then the rest are apartments. Apartments back there. Your building. Is it, full? it used to be the second Wachovia building. Okay. Um, no, it's not full at all. It was like the second Wachovia. That's the first Wachovia. That's where Wachovia Bank started. Okay. Then it's they moved. Right yeah, and then they moved in. The, they built this one, and then they built like <laughs> torpedo building over there. <laughs> Shut up. Then, yeah, that's what they call it. That's what they call it. That ain't that ain't me. That's what they call it. Hey, how's it going? Hey, um, can I get a, a table for tables? Yeah. 10, 10 of us. I can put them together. Do you want to do just like next to each other? We can probably do like that. Nah, that's too many seats, right? Can we do down here and just take up that whole thing? Or nah, never mind. Whatever you see fit. Yeah. Whatever you see fit. I can do like these two, 
Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that works. I'll sit right here. intricate salad anybody here has seen. You know me, bro. You, gonna, you got built, yeah. built, build a salad. Yep. Do y'all know about like land development deals? Yep. You know about entitlements? Yep. Like how that works? It's wholesaling on another level. Like you'll go out and you'll find a plot of land, right? Could be heirs, could be whatever. What you do is you're gonna put down money for due diligence. So you found 10 grand. And you say, yo, I need 90, 120 days. It's a little bit more complex than usual. And then what you do is you go out and you find the highest, best use for this property. And you hire a engineering firm that will design the highest and best use on paper. And then if you gotta get a rezone, get it rezoned. During your due diligence period. During your due diligence period. And once you have a plan, and an approval from the city on your plan, you just 4X whatever the actual real market value for this property is. I'll give you an example. A guy right out, right, right in Winston-Salem, right at the border of Kernersville, Winston-Salem, bought, put 47 acres under contract, spent, um, he probably spent 60 grand in entitlements, drew up a plan, he, bought, he ended up contracting that house for two, 2.1 million, right? Put down probably 20,000 $20, dollars due diligence. Now due diligence is, whether when it expires, if I ain't got my together, that's your money. So for most people that's been sitting on land, that's great. Four months ain't nothing, I, I owned it for 40. He turned around, got the highest and best use on it, and then he sold it for $4.7 million to DR Horton. And he didn't, he didn't do anything. He didn't, he didn't cut a tree, he didn't put a piece of equipment. He literally went and did the hard, the hard work. It's like, I don't give a fuck who's president. It means nothing to me. I care who is my local sheriff, who's my councilman, who's, who's the mayor, who runs the districts, that's what I care about because that's what we eat. Yeah, I don't care if you're Republican, Dominican, but whatever, Republican, Dominican, Republican, Dem Democrat, all of, all of it, right? Republican or Dominican. Yeah, it <laughs> right? It does, it, it don't matter because at the end of the day, it's the transactional. You have a lim limited amount of time to be here and I'm not gonna sit out and wait until you leave. I don't know what you consider rich, but it'll make you sleep good some nights. Like you won't have to worry about money. You don't have to worry about money. Like you can wholesale and make a million dollars. That's great. You know what it costs to make a million dollars. Costs money to make the money, don't it? So for me, the wholesaling office and the reason why Venture Atlas and the whole feeling of having so many people in there is I just want to be presented the deal first. I don't care about making a profit off of it. I haven't I haven't taken money from there since the first year. So the idea is if I can see the opportunity first. I'm a master at painting a picture for somebody else that knows how to look at my, my, my art and be like, that's worth way more than they thought. Uh, uh, we're accountants. We're tired. Yeah. We're just, yeah, yeah, we're, I mean, some of us, some of us were athletes, not me though, but we're all, we're all corporate accountants. I got you. Got it. That's the account. I ain't even seen nothing. Keep, keep talking. <laughs> and then what had happened was that one view. <laughs> yeah, and then it flipped over on the other side. Yeah, I got it. It's the worst when you 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 bust yeah and everybody stop talking. Yeah, you got it too. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so because you got. Yeah, that's where we'll, we'll end up there. Okay. I got to describe what you guys can look at. Yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe better for us. Uh, just got to extend it. Hey, Glenn, why the fuck? 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 I like talking all day. That's a city. That's a blessing. I'm gonna need to see all your IDs. That's what I'm saying. They looking for I'm good. Boys. Yeah. You going to Craggy's? Where are you going to Craggy's? Yeah, it's it's right here to the right. I still I still live in a condo right now. My house ain't even done. I wasn't even too concerned about it, but when he sold it for 90, I was like, okay. In this business, man, you if you if you need a place to stay, you need to just go ahead and sub to a house. Yeah, I was, I mean, I I had I was worth over eight million before I started 
thinking about buying something for myself. Cause I, I just use properties like trading ponds, man. And then when I came across this, uh, at first it was 17.4 acres. When I came across that, I was like, you know what? Let me just build something. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'll spend a half a million building something. Man, I'm over a million dollars right now. Right, right, that's a tax write off. <laughs> And so all most people are like, oh yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to own those small planes. All planes start out like this. Wow. What you're looking at is a plane. So minus the engine and the and um, some of the fuselage parts. But this is what a plane. This is how a plane starts out. And so these guys assemble the planes, and it'll done. It'll be done and look like this. And uh, that goes for three hundred twenty-five thousand. And it's 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 autopilot, flies by itself, does the whole nine. It's it's everything. Does the dog fly? Huh? Does he go with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He jumps in the back, hangs out, and so like like a king air, like that. Yeah, like that. So like yeah. Well eight seats, you, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. so yeah, six eight. Well before you started pushing them. Um. So my my other business partner, Mike, he's the one who pushed this in the United States. Okay. And so he he owns a plane, and then our other business partner he owns the same plane. So we all own the same planes. Okay. So I have to spend a hundred thousand dollars in remodeling this place by April, and so once my crews kind of let up a little bit, uh, probably toward right after Christmas, I'm gonna uh, have them in here. All of this will be painted fully white. The floors will be redone fully white. The offices will be completely redone, and then so we got more places back there, and then all of this will be organized as in like different sections where the planes move along the way. And so it's become more of a manufacturing style setup. And so this, this, this hangar is where Piedmont Airlines started, which then became uh, US Airways, which then became American Airlines. Wow. Piedmont cool. started here. Yeah. And so these, these, these planes are just, just wealthy individuals. Um, my, my next plane is a uh, M600, Piper M600. It'll do about 1,800 nautical miles. Like, how do you go about becoming a pilot? You just get with a, uh, an instructor, and he starts to teach you. Mm -hmm. And once, once the instructor, barely no, once the instructor teaches you, then you have to start stepping up mm -hmm. in your actual, like, um, your trainings. Mm -hmm. And you go from single engine to commercial to just different. And then once you get enough flight hours, then you start flying the regional jets, okay. which is which is more like. Uh, the small, like you take your short hops on like American Airlines, like you're going from, you're like you may be going from Greensboro to New York. It's a, yeah, it's a small, no, smaller than that. It's like your CRJs and stuff like that. And then once you get enough time in that, then you start flying the 787, 770s, you know, those, those series. It's just time, just flight time. All right, Josh, we out of here. How long is the leash you got there? Five. It takes a year per plane. Huh? It takes a year per plane. Somewhere, yep, somewhere around there. Once we get, you're once, trying to get like four or five at a time. Um, once we, once, once we get to what they call a quick build model, it'll take us 90 days to pop out a plane. I know, I know I can't live in Spain for eight months, then come back to the States for like two months for the off season and go back and do it over yeah. here. Yeah. You know, I gotta... <laughs> I gotta get up, find something that I wanna do. Like man, that professional man. sports life is tough, man. It is. That's ain't no joke. A lot of people think they wanna do it, man. And like, if it's tough. And if you're mediocre, you gonna know it. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's more about how Edson dealt with, with his transition, man. It was the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. Yeah. Team, yeah, you got, for him, man, it was I, tough. That was, I mean, he he went from the pinnacle, one of the best strikers in the United States, to. The, the end that we all see. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he was in LA, like in the Mecca. I'm glad he went over to Germany and got a big bag, you know? And you know, one thing about his stats that's pretty cool is that he's in a top 10 for goals. I think he still is, I haven't checked in a while. Goals in, in America, right? Yep. And um, he never took a penalty kick. So no goals mm. hey, he got has ever been penalty kicks. So the other house sits there. Okay, this is the one right Yeah, there. so I got it. You got that for 50? 50? 57 total, yeah. I see you already got your little dirt for the driveway. Yeah. Yep. For, yep. for him. For her. 
Definitely an old lady. <laughs> so the, the camera system that on this house is $73,000. You designed this? Oh, uh, yeah. That's only not, not all the way. I, I took it from a plan and then customized it a That's little bit. And then who picked family. finishes and stuff? That's without them. Huh? Huh? Who picked, who picked all the finishes and tile and lights all, and shit? All my guys, yeah. All my guys, yeah. So the security system has, has two thermal cameras that scan all the property. Every second, it scans three, every second it scans three times, right? So if you try to enter the property at night, it permanently draws a borderline. So if you enter through the woods, it's gonna pick it up and the camera's focusing on you and it tracks you. And so it's, um, it's a pretty smart, impressive camera system. All thermal. And then it, it grabs your gun out of the base and it's just sitting there. So funny, funny you say that. So it's set up to where it sends a GPS coordinate and you can launch a drone to hover that, hover that spot. Oh, yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll show you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, my favorite. My favorite. That's that, that uh, is it shiny or matte? Matte, yeah, matte. But flat panel? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't build like a super big house, right? Yeah. Me, you know, this side of the house is for the family. So the house is a, a fully smart house too, so. The house is integrated with a system called Josh AI. So it's a little small listening device about that size. And you can tell the house to do anything from turning the lights, the shades, the music. So you see there's, there's uh, 38 speakers in the house, 48 speakers everywhere in the house. And so you can, the music will travel with you wherever you want. Each room has its own individual seven inch um, screen that you control the blades, you control everything in here. And so this future kids rooms on this side. 10 foot ceiling? Um, I don't know, man. What do you think? Uh, 12, 10? 12. You six two? The, the doors are eight. Yeah, so 10. The the moon sits, the moon sits, the moon sits right there. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so my side of the house is over here. Or should I say our, our side of the house? My me and my future. So for me, like, like I'm a minimalist in the sense that I don't like cluttered furniture and shit like that. I grew up where my mom had like 10 couches in the living room. She matter of fact, she's still, there's probably got seven in there. She lives by herself. And so this is my bedroom. And the only thing that goes in here is a bed and two nightstands. Oh man, what kind of shot is this? And this is a full commercial steamer. So the, the, the house steams up, this steam, that's why I had to go glass. So you have that steam in here. Yeah, so it has light therapy, so the lights cut off. And so everything is controlled by here. You control the, um, and so from your phone, you can be somewhere and say, turn, you know, turn the shower on and set it to 98 degrees and turn on that or have the steamer ready. So, you know, when, you, when you're sick, you, have, you want to get into a steam room, just pop it in here. You're good. He ain't got a Ferrari tool. He said a Ferrari tool. Yeah, so the toilet, the toilet's pretty interesting. It's got a full remote control system. Ones, twos, three, <laughs> concords. Yeah, this, these these are gonna be my immediate wears. So I can't fit all my shoes in here. This is just gonna be like my my immediate. It's literally gonna be anything that's eye level that mm -hmm. you can grab and yeah. have to bend down or, or reach. Exactly. Over. So. I can't show you all that. So this is the media room where we watch movies. So up here has, is what they call um, Adobe Atmos sound system. So six, six uh, speakers in the, in the ceiling. And so when you, like these speakers are like the real. So between the speakers and the smart house was 120,000. And so if you see every single window has um, wires to them to control the shades um, by voice, everything's by voice. You have uh, right on the one of those is gonna be, they're labeled, but one of them is a, uh, a small listening device, a little, it's like 50 cent piece. And the other one is a uh, seven inch screen that can control everything. And so you're gonna have like four reclinable movie chairs and then a, there's a custom built couch that goes in here. That's like a big lounge joint and the 4K projector sits up there. And then the screen drops, I think it's 130. Can't remember what 230, one of them just drops down from here. 
and there's a special shade that goes here that does blackouts in this room. For me, I don't really go home. I'm a guy that wakes up and I leave the house and I don't come back till I'm ready to go to sleep. So that's why making just a, a large house just wasn't, yeah. wasn't uh -huh. really, yeah. So they just kind of put the, got the pH levels on the pool right the other day. You see it? Beautiful. Yeah, this is gonna extend about, what up bro? Another day. <laughs> this is gonna extend to about another 50% more. And this is the outdoor kitchen. Yeah. So that, that get, all, this gets blocked off. Yeah. So this gets moved. So electrician did the wrong. This is supposed to be in here. That's why the, the thing's here. So this room will get blocked off and the rest of this be an outdoor kitchen. You're gonna have your smoker. You're gonna have uh, a bop, a uh, brick oven pizza. Yeah. Um, the the count the island here is a hibachi island. Max, have you uh, always been into like the whole self defense stuff, dogs, security stuff? Uh, I was a, I joined the military when I was seventeen. Yeah. So um, familiar with. Yeah, yeah, fam yeah, familiar with a lot of that stuff. And so, just to you know, protect, it's always better to be safe than sorry, right? Yeah. I've always been into it too, and then when I had my first daughter, you got extra height heightened. <laughs> You'll find out, I mean. I can't imagine, right? take a whole nother turn whenever you get married. Yeah. As soon as you start introducing kids, kids it goes up. Levels increase. So just, just the driveway, paving the driveway was 32, 33 grand. So this is definitely not getting paved. This is gonna get new rock yeah. and they can come level it out. So I'm also like an agent for PBR, which is professional bull riding. And so those guys ride horses all the time. And so they're gonna be taking care of my horses and so in exchange for that, they get to keep a horse here and um, stuff like that. But yeah, they live across the street. Yeah, I'm paying 1500 bucks a month now. I, I bought all the metal and I had my cowboys in the off season put the building up for some cash and extra money. And so they installed the insulation wrong on the ceiling, which is fine. So I'm gonna rip all the insulation off and start spraying this too, because I love spray foam so much better. And um, so I'm gonna have What's this. The benefit? Why, like, why would you? Since it's already up, mm -hmm. why would you take it down? So there's, um, there's like they didn't install the the, the roof 100% correct, okay. so it got wet. God, that's and right. and so I guarantee there's probably mold in there at some point in time. And so for the horses, you know, some of my horses are twelve, fifteen thousand dollar horses. I don't want them to get live in here and get sick, right? And so. Um, just do that and probably spend, you know, spray foam is not that terrible. He's probably gonna charge me like eight, nine grand to get it done in here. Cause I, he's gonna, he sprayed for my house. He's gonna hit that building, gonna do this one. So we'll tear all this down. Wasted money, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be, if it, if the spray foam gets wet, it doesn't matter. No. Right? Cause it's, it's spray foam. <laughs> so yeah, dude, this is, this is, this is my example of living life on purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm taking all my work stuff and I'm putting here on this property. Cause I'm just saying, okay, I'm going to be a super husband, super dad. So that when it comes work time, I walk a hundred feet from my house into the barn, shoot some videos, Matt, go back in. That's, a mini, daddy, that's can... a mini doc of like living in uh, on purpose or living intentionally. Like so for me, I'm a, I'm a like, I'm like a serial thinker. Okay. Like I, I spend a lot of time alone thinking. I'm Wes, I'm sure you do the same that's thing. What I want to talk to you about today when we get rolling. Yeah. yeah I want to talk about All right, cool. Yeah. I spend a lot of time alone thinking and so to me, company is not great all the time. Um, there's, there's a lot of um, talks you gotta have with yourself. And so that's why I, I'm kind of, a, I'm a loner in real life. And so you, but when you do get around people, it's intentional. Yeah. It's not loosey goosey, you know what I mean? It's because you have this, you have this aura, like you have, imagine your brain as like, um, like, a, like a bank account or, or something that is, Imagine your brain having a, a, a immune deficiency and words are the virus, right? And people are the virus. And so when you're around and people and you see certain things, your, your brain is more acceptable to become infected because your brain has immune deficiency. And so if, if, you're, if, if you allow people to be around you and put certain things in your head, you subconsciously believe it or do, without even, you just see it, you just see things. Like there's a reason why growing up in like uh, improvised like hood or like, there's a reason why a lot of people drive, this is gonna be real, real micro. There's a reason why a lot of black people drive Nissan Maximas or Altimas. And you may not, you may not even understand why, because that car was a symbol of status. Of status. 
And so you, you, then when you get it, then when you think you need to get that status, you get that car. Now, I know that sounds real small in particular what I'm talking about in the grand picture, but in the big picture, you start to see stuff like that. And so if you ever grew up in any of us, if we, any of us ever grew up in a place where, uh, what, what's a dollar number for, per hour that you know somebody made it? What, what, what? 20, 20, 20, right? So you subconsciously believe a $20 an hour job is a good job. So when you hit that $20 hour mark, you made it. And that's the limitation that you that that's the infection that you put in your brain from somebody else's that your surroundings. And so you got to you got to be intentional to people who you hang around with. And if you can do that, then. But the first thing you got to do as an adult is you got to unlearn everything you've already learned. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. And so it's like, it's like crazy. Like, and, and so like, I've always tried to push the norm. That's why like there's 1.9% African-American pilots. So what I go do, I go get my license for leisure. Yeah. Right. Because obviously it's going to put me in a circle that I'm, that most people ain't in. Right. Yep. Yeah. How many black cowboys do you know? Not many around here. You got to go to Houston for that. And so you get into things that are different than the norm and you start to see you start to see things that become your new normal. Like I don't post. I'm not a, like if you never watch my stuff, I'm not a flashy poster. I don't go around posting things and holding money and all that stuff. I got one hundred twenty thousand dollars cash in my car right now. But I won't post it on Instagram. You know, why? Light it up on your, oh, but that's what people, that, but that's what people do. You see what I'm saying? And so I don't, when I show my house, which I really do is only for, to help people see that, yo, you can do whatever it is you want to do. I don't show it in a flashy way. I don't say, Oh, look at my $80,000 pool. No, I'm like, yo, think, look at this. Look, look, look at this. It's beautiful. It's done. I think that's the big thing. Everything has purpose. Yeah. Like when we pulled up, literally, I was like, this house is beautiful, but it's not what I expected. It's not huge. It's not so big house. Yeah, it's crazy. I could have built a big house. house. I was just putting a compound. Yeah, I could have built a, snipers. I could build it. I could have <laughs> built, there's be some snipers in here. It'd be me. But I, I, I could have built a big ass house right on five acres like do you know so let me tell you what people do i could have took the same million dollars i have in this property i spent over a million dollars here cash i could have spent the same million dollars and took 20 percent down on a, what a five million dollar house yep. and, stun it with it. and stun it with it making payments of yeah. my favorite car is a lamborghini i could buy one every month i what, what am i doing with a lamborghini and what's the sell the f does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Who, where the hell he gonna yeah, go? He gonna <laughs> <laughs> Not on my Alcantara. <laughs> yeah, but I go on vacation, I spend 20,000 in a weekend on, on being around in the right places, going to the highest resorts, swimming at the pool with billionaires. It's all on purpose. I met a dude that owned, owned big winery in Napa Valley. Says, man, anytime you want to come out, here's my cell phone number. Anytime. You know what I mean? So you got to be very intentional and you got to make sure that the people you surround yourself with know your intention. My, my friends that I hang around, Derek, he's an attorney. Miguel, he's an attorney. Ishmael, he's a business owner. That's it. So when I talk about doing certain things, it don't seem like I'm bragging. When I talk about doing certain things, they're going to either correct me with, you know, affirmative ways of like, now nah, you're thinking about this in the wrong way or here's how I here's how I would think about it. So it's just it's just out here for the taking. I would have never thought that six years ago I would be in this position to be where I am. Six years. And I could have done all this three years ago. People work for me. Some people work for me. Now there's some people that work with me. But those people that have that were doubters in the beginning, they just fulfill, they work for me. People that was with me in the beginning, they work with me. Cause you ain't gonna get the same level of access that my other guys get. And you just gotta be intentional with your time, man. I'm designing this shit on purpose.